Yo, I am going to show you the best custom tactic to play fast tiki taka and possession football. So if you want to play like prime Guardiola, prime Barcelona, then keep watching. These tactics work amazingly in Ultimate Team. I use them in Ultimate Team personally and they're, they're so good. But you can also use them in career mode a bit more of a realistic way because there's one change between Ultimate Team and career mode that I would make. And I'll show you that at the end. Right, so we're going to start with the, the formation. We're playing the 3-1-4-2. Uh, the now listen, I've never played 3 at the back ever before. Like, I have played it, but I'm always so bad at it because I just feel like defensively, it's rubbish. Everyone's too attacking. And especially this FIFA, I am horrible at defending. I know a lot of other people are. However, something about this, right, it just solidifies your defence. Even though you've only got three defenders instead of four, I'll explain how, right? So in this FIFA, what's bad is jockeying and, and slide tackling slash stand tackling. That's just terrible because players like, uh, I don't know, let's just pick Pedri for example, right stick dribbling or RB dribbling, R1, whatever, is so effective. You could just dribble around everybody. So if you go in for a slide tackle or a stand tackle, they're just zooming past you. And I, I just don't think jockeying is that useful. So, what is useful for defending is big strong guys. See if you have, um, I think it's legacy defending or something. You just go and look in your settings and change your defending. If you press A, they just shove the guy off the ball if you're close to him. And it's so overpowered and it works much better with centre backs rather than full backs. Because I mean, if you take Baldi, right, great card, 64 physical. You're going to be a lot more successful doing it with Araujo with 84 or Kundi with 80. So I felt like when you were playing four at the back, you've only got two centre backs. And the full backs, I just don't think are great for it, for defending this year. All they can do is really run. If you want to push people off the ball and defend in a really meta style, you need centre backs. And playing with three of them is, is game changing. Try it, honestly. And a wee tip for this is see if you uh, do the Evolutions Pacey Protector, I think it's called. Whatever centre back you do, that's just perfect. Just use one of those centre backs because they're going to be big, tall, strong centre backs that you usually wouldn't use because they're slow, but they obviously get the pace from the evolving. So it's, it's a genuine perfect fit for this. I'm using the Barca team here as an example because it actually does fit quite well. The only position that this doesn't fit quite well is the CDM. And that's because De Jong, right, statistically wise, great for a CDM. You've got the pace. Pace doesn't need to be insane. Around 80, you can go with 70 if you want. Passing's good, dribbling's good, defending and physical's good enough. However, what's most important here is actually the work rates. Um, De Jong's got high attacking, but medium defensive. So if I'm playing an ultimate team, I don't want that. I would want medium or low attacking or medium or high defensive work rate. Try and get the high defensive work rate. That's the key there. So try not get a high high. You want either low medium attacking or medium, but much better would be high defensive work rates. That's basically what you want. Apart from that, you can kind of get away with anyone here. You just needs to be good passing and you know good enough defending and physical. I even used Rodri here, and that was in the Ultimate Team, not even Career Mode, Ultimate Team, I used Rodri, he's got like 60 pace, but he actually worked very well. Also, in a Career Mode, you would get away with using De Jong, if you want to use De Jong. I think De Jong would be more suitable for one of these roles, which I'll talk about in a second, but if you're playing Career Mode and you want to use Gundogan, Pedri or Gavi or something, and you want De Jong to be the, center, the CDM, you can get away with it. The reason you can get away with it in uh, Career Mode is just because and also Team De Jong, if he's got that high attacking work rate, he's going to get forward. And, the, you know, the computer doesn't always counter attack. However, Ultimate Team, that's all you're going to get. You're just going to get fast guys running through and you're not going to have a CDM protecting that, that space there. And they're just going to get right through your defense. So it's really important, those work rates. And next, I'm going to talk about the CMs, the center mids. Now, these are a pretty important position. However, you can actually pretty much use anyone. The only thing I wouldn't do is don't use a CDM or a cam here. Now that sounds weird because like, why would you? But I mean like, Pedri is the perfect example. You can use Pedri as a cam if you really want to in another formation, but 
He's got good enough defending and physical. It's not insane. It's not great, but it's there. Gundogan, again, it's a pretty good option. I maybe would stay away in Ultimate Team because of the 62 pace. But it's not the end of the world. All you want here is two pretty much box-to-box -box midfielders. So like I said, don't have a CDM here and a cam here. Don't have two cams. You want pretty much balanced centre mids. On Ultimate Team, I use Goretzka and Marino. So Goretzka is on the higher end of the prices for some. And it's a great card to use because it's very balanced. Whereas Marino is like 2k. But it's still a really good card because he's kind of all balanced stats. He's not the fastest. He's like 72 pace. But you'll get away with that. Um, so that, that's pretty much all you need to kind of box to box centre mid. You can have one that's slightly more attacking. Um, like, um, well Barca don't really have one. But um, you can have one like proper uh, box to box. And then one... I guess Pedri, maybe maybe Pedri with a little better shooting you could use, but if you were going to use a player like Felix, like you can use Felix as a cam, but I would not use Felix in this position. It's just not good enough. Bonus here, and another bonus tip for Ultimate Team, is have at least one of them. Kind of tall, you know, um, Barca kind of lack in that tall area, the height area, but in Ultimate Team, if you can get one that's kind of a little bit taller, a little bit better than they are. That'll be good because I'll show you why when we go into the, the actual player instructions. But it's not, you don't need it. It's, it's just a little tip for Ultimate Team because Crossland's quite overpowered this year. I'm going to move on to the Strikers. I'm, I'm actually going to leave the left mid and right mid to the end because they're pretty much kind of the most important for me uh, positions in this formation. Because the Strikers, they can just be anyone. Realistically, they can be anyone. I prefer Strikers with better passing. So, um, you know, Barcelona, again, the perfect example, 80 passing, 78 passing. That's kind of all you need. You don't need anything insane for a striker. Uh, but, again, you can use anyone here. You can use people that are just fast, Aussie, Aussie men maybe. You can use a Lewandowski, a big, you know, slower, but very good at shooting. What I like to use is I like to use a mix. So I would, I would use like a Lewandowski here and then... A Felix here, maybe not Felix in Ultimate Team. I actually use Torres in Ultimate Team, but his evolution, so he's a little bit faster. So like that's my perfect mix. I like a, a big, tall, strong striker next to a little fast, agile one. But you can use any. It's up to you. Left mid and the right mid, right? So reason why this is quite important is because this is going to provide the whole width. Three centre mids is going to allow you to keep possession very well and you can link up with your strikers and your defenders. So this whole area in the middle of the pitch is going to be amazing. You're, going to, you're always going to have options. However, if you're playing against someone that's really good at defending, you're going to get quite congested in the centre. And that's when you need to bring the ball out wide. And it's not... These aren't... Uh, if you use two fullbacks here, it's not five at the back. They can get back sometimes, and they will get back if your opponent has possession, and it kind of looks like a five at the back. But trust me, as soon as you get that ball, these two guys are sprinting up the wings and they're going to act as wingers. And also, another little tip, your right mid and left mid, they're actually going to score goals. Because if you bring, oh I didn't mean that, if you bring the ball out to Cancelo when you're attacking and you're looking in the box, Baldi's actually going to be making that run at the back post. And it's the same for the other way about, Baldi on the ball, Cancelo's going to make the run at the back post. Now these players are never going to be the tallest because, you know, if you're using right mids, left mids, right backs, left backs, they're never the tallest players. But it's still, it's so effective because no one marks them. They're too busy on the strikers and the centre mids. No one marks that back post run and if you get a whipped cross in, it's a goal every time. They will score goals for you. So it's your choice. You can use two full backs. You can use one full back and one winger. It's up to you. I started with one full back and one winger. Then I moved to two fullbacks. That's only because I packed players. Like I packed Alfonso Davies. I thought, you know what? I don't really want to use them in defence because fullbacks aren't that great. They're weak. They can't really push players off the ball. And that's really OP this year. But he's great at attacking here. He's got the crossing, he's got the pace. So I'll use him here. And then on the other side, I just used an out and out winger, Diaz. I used and it worked perfectly. I only changed it because I got another good right back. Wilms from the season pass, brilliant player. You can use 
two wingers if you want. If you're that competent at defending, use two out and out wingers and you'll score a ton of goals. But if not, maybe use one and then one winger, one fullback and one winger, sorry, or two two fullbacks. It's up to you. It's personal preference. And, you know, you might pack someone really great in all to your team and that might decide it for you. Now, the tactics, the the uh, the custom tactics will make this formation. Now, so, it's not that complicated. There is one thing out of all these that's going to maybe surprise you, but you're going to keep defensive style on balance and you're just going to keep the, the team width 40. Now, keeping the team width 40, it's not too narrow, but because you have three centre backs, you don't want like 60 because then people are just going to be able to run right between your defenders because there's just a big open gap. Keep it slightly narrow because if they do attack down the wing, you're uh, your left mid and right back, uh, sorry, left mid and right mid will help get back and track the wingers. Now depth, this is actually going to go up, that's surprising, up to 85. Now, I was actually surprised that this, this worked. I was struggling with defending and I thought, you know, I've tried everything, I may as well try to put the depth right up. It doesn't seem like 85 in the game, you know, they're not sitting at the halfway line and just getting absolutely destroyed on the counter attack. It just, uh, something about the, the line and the, the press that they put on, it's just so overpowered that, you know, and that's also, if you have fast centre backs, it's going to help you so much. You don't need the Kundis of the world, you know, they, you don't need that high standard of player. You can use players that are, you know, 80 pace, 78 pace. It's going to work fine for you. If you are struggling and you, you're not a player that's, that's comfortable with that high depth, you can bring it down, but I would not go any lower than 71. If you go any lower than 71, it's just going to be a normal back line and they're not going to press or anything like that. So keep it 71 or higher. I use 85 and I think it works very well. Now the rest is pretty standard. You're just going to go uh, build up play, you're going to go balanced, chance creation, you're going to go direct passing. Some other FIFAs I've used like slow build up or possession. But nah, I would go direct passing, and if you want to play the slower possession based, then you actually just play that way, and your players will make those runs and, and come short for you, rather than force yourself to do it by using like slow build up here. Just go balance and then play how you want to play. That's the best advice for this formation. You want to whack the width up to 60, you know, just making sure that you're not too congested in the middle. You will have the width from the left mids and right mids. And then it's kind of, again, up to personal preference for these. I keep these at two, and I keep players in the box, just one down. Just so, you know, your your strikers are obviously going to be in the box. Your left mid and right mid are going to sometimes come into the box. But keeping it up, this one bar is going to allow a centre mid to either come to the edge of the box or get in the box. And it's just going to help a lot more with your attacking options. Now here's the, uh, the custom tactic, or the player instructions, should I say. They're not actually that complicated, so we, I'll just start with the defence because that's easy. Don't touch any of it. Same with the keeper. If you want, you can play, um, where is it, sweeper keeper. I honestly, I don't notice a difference. I like sweeper keepers, but I don't notice a difference, especially in ultimate team. It's just kind of the same for me. Keep the defence the same, and uh, I would just say the strikers first as well because they're exactly balanced. Um, you can see if you're using a slower player like a Lewandowski, a big target man. I would then put, um, where are we here? Stay forward, just so they're, you know, they're not constantly running back and forth. Because uh, a player like Felix or, or whoever you're using here, they can just make the runs. But if you have a, a slower player, you just kind of want them staying up front a wee bit more. Your CDM, your CDM is going to be a stay back and cover center. Nothing crazy there. That's what I like with most of my CDMs, to be honest. Stay back and cover centre, that's going to be the best option. And the two other centre mids, leave them on completely balanced. However, another, this is going back to the tip that I just said. If you have one that's slightly taller, you know, six foot two, maybe better in the air, good header accuracy, good jumping, whatever. If you have one of them that's like that, you can actually then put get into the box of the cross and that's just going to provide you another option. If you are a player who likes the crosses from the left mid and right mids, that's going to provide another option in the box and you're going to score a lot of headed goals because these whippages are deadly this year. But you don't have to have that. You can just keep it unbalanced and these two players will make their own runs. Now the only other position that really 
has custom tactics as these guys to the left mid and right mid. All it's going to be is come back on defence and uh, get in behind. If I can find that, there we go. Come back on defence and get in behind. It's just going to make sure that they, they do come back, but they're getting behind is also going to make sure they do get forward. So they're just going to be running up and down those wings all game. And uh, it's so effective. So that's it. That's the custom tactics. Um, this is going to help you play such good tiki tackle because you have so many players in the middle of the pitch but if you do want you have those wide options still it's, and they're, they're a lot more effective than playing them at a four at the back you know it's going to help your defense and it's going to help your attack and it's going to help you play possession and fast tiki tackle football these are the best tactics i use them on ultimate team and it works very great so the one change that i would make in career mode if you're looking for these tactics for career mode the the reason i would change it for career mode is because you can do this you can press x and you can move players positions that's something you can't do in ultimate team so that's why you obviously can't do an ultimate team but the one change that i would make is i would maybe bring him a wee bit deeper it doesn't actually matter this one but the one that does matter is the left striker i would bring the left striker further down and make him a, a center forward and this player is going to act kind of as a false nine. Again, Barca's a, a great example. Felix, Ferran Torres is going to play great here. Neymar, Messi, whoever you want like that. You just want them to be great on the ball, but also good shooting as well. Like, I wouldn't use a, a Pedri here. I would use an attacker, but an attacker that's better on the ball. All that's going to do is really, again, help with the tiki tackle of the midfield linking up to the attack because this player is going to come further down. But when you do need it and you are on the attack, they will also get further up and help Lewandowski score goals. And it's just a great way to emphasize the tiki tackle of the team. But anyway, that's it. Use these tactics, enjoy them and uh, play amazing, great football. None of this parking the bus, none of this whack the ball up counter attack. Play great football. Anyway, that's going to be it, so goodbye.